Okay, so hi everyone and welcome. I'm Savannah and Sean is here as well and we are the Refuse Management Specialists here at Bush Systems. Thanks everyone for joining and participating in our webinar today. We expect that this webinar will be about half an hour or so in length. If you have any questions throughout the webinar, please feel free to type your questions in the toolbar on the right side of the screen. Um, it, the questions will take a look at the end of the webinar and we'll get back to you by email. So this webinar will explore the importance of achieving a shift to a circular economy and the opportunities to drive innovation. We'll look at some of the various sectors that are involved in making the shift and what improvements are recommended for optimizing each sector. The importance of improving resource product productivity will also be examined designing products so that they are reintroduced into the process as resources to create further value, while at the same time minimizing and eliminating waste. In addition, we'll also look at some areas of the world that are already uh, successfully adopting a circular economy and some of the strategies that they employ. We hear about environmental challenges all the time, like climate change, species endangerment, and greenhouse gas emissions. But what if there's only one solution to combat all these issues? Could we come together to make a change? What if this solution already existed? Today we'll be speaking about a shift to a circular economy and the underlying opportunities to drive that change through innovation. In 2012, 1.3 billion tons of solid waste was produced worldwide in cities. That's about 1.2 kilograms per person per day. With population growth and urbanization increasing, this is expected to rise to 2.2 billion tons by 2025. Our global economy is made up of finite materials. We all know this. And the use of these materials is increasing exponentially. By the year 2050, with an estimated population of about 9.7 billion people, we would need approximately three planets to satisfy this need. Clearly, we are operating on a system that cannot run in the long term. Today, we live in a linear economy, a traditional make, use, dispose cycle. In this traditional linear system, products are manufactured from raw resources, used and then ultimately sent to the landfill. This entire framework is fundamentally flawed. To change how we feel about waste, we need to change our thinking, keeping resources in use for as long as possible, getting the maximum use out of them, then recovering and regenerating the materials at the end of the product's life. This is a circular economy, a closed loop system. The ultimate goal being to eliminate waste. With the adoption of a circular economy, we have the opportunity to sustain our natural resources, to reduce emissions and enhance environmental protection, to promote economic growth, create jobs and savings for consumers. We're now gonna show a short clip from the Alan MacArthur Foundation that we believe does a great job at showing some of the basic concepts associated with the linear economy. Living systems have been around for a few billion years and will be around for many more. In the living world, there's no landfill. Instead, materials flow. One species' waste is another's food, energy is provided by the sun, things grow, then die, and nutrients return to the soil safely. And it works. Yet as humans, we've adopted a linear approach. We take, we make, and we dispose. A new phone comes out, so we ditch the old one. Our washing machine packs up, so we buy another. Each time we do this, we're eating into a finite supply of resources and often producing toxic waste. It simply can't work long term. So what can? If we accept that the living world's cyclical model works, can we change our way of thinking so that we too operate a circular economy? Let's start with the biological cycle. How can our waste build capital rather than reduce it? By rethinking and redesigning products and components and the packaging they come in, we can create safe and compostable materials that help grow more stuff. As they say in the movies, no resources have been lost in the making of this material. So what about the washing machines, mobile phones, fridges? We know they don't biodegrade. Here, we're talking about another sort of rethink, a way to cycle valuable metals, polymers, and alloys, so they maintain their quality and continue to be useful beyond the shelf life of individual products. 
What if the goods of today became the resources of tomorrow? It makes commercial sense. Instead of the throw away and replace culture we've become used to, we'd adopt a return and renew one, where products and components are designed to be disassembled and regenerated. One solution may be to rethink the way we view ownership. What if we never actually owned our technologies? We simply licensed them from the manufacturers. Now, let's put these two cycles together. Imagine if we could design products to come back to their makers, their technical materials being reused and their biological parts increasing agricultural value. And imagine that these products are made and transported using renewable energy. Here we have a model that builds prosperity long term. And the good news is, there are already companies out there who are beginning to adopt this way of working. But the circular economy isn't about one manufacturer changing one product. It's about all the interconnecting companies that form our infrastructure and economy coming together. It's about energy. It's about rethinking the operating system itself. We have a fantastic opportunity to open new perspectives and new horizons. Instead of remaining trapped in the frustrations of the present, with creativity and innovation, we really can rethink and redesign our future. Okay, so the circular economy really follows a cycle that has been represented time and time again in nature and proven to be effective. So countless natural processes operate on this circular system. They go, in a, they go around and around and they aren't linear. So what we're trying to mimic here with the circular economy is just that. When solving design problems, we can look to nature for help. The plants, animals, microbes, and all the organisms and ecosystems, these are the design geniuses. Biomimicry is basically exploring sustainable solutions to combat human challenges by mimicking nature's patterns and strategies. We aren't the first ones to build or to heat or cool a habitat or to waterproof something. Nature has already solved so many of the problems that we're currently dealing with. Nature-inspired solutions creates a whole new era of design and invention. We have this great opportunity before us to rethink. Rethink what we are using redesign what's being made, and reuse renewable resources to power the system. The circular economy works at all levels of a product's conceptualization, design, and development. By minimizing wasting materials and the use of hazardous or non-recyclables, fewer raw materials are being used in the initial stages, which results in less materials ending up in the landfill. The circular economy really begins with the research and design stage, where the development of products and ideas are created with sustainable materials in mind. The recent shutdowns in China's borders has shown us that North America generates and collects plenty of recyclable material. These materials need to be considered first before the extraction of virgin ones. Recycling recovery centers are continually improving, the end, grade, the end grade material is consistently getting better, and the companies who can realize these untapped resources will surely thrive in the coming years. Following along with this mentality, the product's end of life is considered during the design phase and created in such a way that materials can be easily regenerated or restored throughout their life cycle. So it's at the production stage where businesses work together and collaborate to ensure that minimal greenhouse gas emissions are produced, and also that best practices are shared to ensure the most efficient processes are implemented. Have you ever heard the saying, one man's trash is another man's treasure? Well, this is circular economy. Partnerships can be found in local and global communities where materials that are seen as waste are shared with those who see value within them. The hospitality and food industry could see cost savings by partnering with waste to energy facilities or organic farms. They could use their byproducts to generate or energy or fertile soil. An example is Maple Leaf Farms, who partnered with Decor Group of Companies to find a use for their paraffin wax. By altering their production slightly, Decor was able to use the paraffin wax and sawdust to develop a sustainable fire starter alternative called the BioBrick. These are just a couple examples of how businesses can make small alterations to the way that they operate to realize environmental and economic benefits.
So the whole, um, the next stage of the circular economy would be the dis distribution stage. So this is a big component um, to the cycle because of the concept of extended producer responsibility. So this is a term becoming more and more common today. The goal of the EPR is to hold importers, producers, brand owners, and manufacturers more responsible for the environmental impact of their products and their services. So by requiring certain industries and product producers to take back products or packaging after it's been used, it shifts financial responsibility from municipalities and taxpayers to those who are responsible for the waste in the first place. This will ensure that businesses take the necessary steps during uh, design and production to allow their products to be easily recyclable and collectible. The consumer stage is one in which education and awareness are key. The consumers are the ones that drive this entire cycle. Consumers can choose to make greener choices to share their products that they have so others don't have to purchase and fix products that they have that are broken. There's a growing industry referred to as a sharing economy. Did you know that most cars are parked 95% of the time? How can we capitalize on this resource, enabling consumers access to affordable, cheap transportation while reducing environmental and resource stress? Car sharing platforms like Get Around or Relay Rides do exactly this. The users of this service have the ability to rent a vehicle for a short period of time and then park them in designated spots for the next user. Similarly, Bike Share in Toronto, Ontario and many other areas of the globe enable citizens to take the opportunity to reduce harmful vehicle emissions and rent bikes, enhancing a sharing platform. One product, one service, helping hundreds of people. Supporting the share economy is one way consumers are the driving force behind the circular economy. The repair and reuse stage is often an afterthought of product design. Throughout the manufacturing and designing of products, sometimes we forget that they will eventually break down and need to be repaired, or else they'll be thrown out. This is one area of the circular economy that really has to flourish. Everyone knows that when your fridge or television decides it doesn't want to work anymore, it's almost just as expensive to buy a new one as it is to repair the one that you have. This drives consumers to just throw it away and purchase again. One of the main culprits of this is that products are not designed with repairs in mind. Repairing the camera in your iPhone, replacing the drum in your dryer, or buying a new compressor for your fridge. All of these things, more often than not, require servicing from a licensed technician or professional. And it involves taking apart your entire product just to replace one single piece. What if products were created with modularity in mind? With ease and accessibility to all components with a market to purchase and replace needed parts by your own in your own home. What can we do as consumers in our local community to help make repair and reuse higher up on the waste reduction hierarchy? One example of how this looks today is the Restart Project, a London-based organization that holds seminars and workshops to empower and encourage consumers to repair instead of replace. Focusing on education and community involvement, Restart gives you the knowledge and confidence to make these costly repairs yourself, extending your product's lifetime. So lastly, the recycle stage completes the whole cycle to the circular economy, ensuring materials are recycled and ultimately don't end up in the landfill. It's this stage that promotes the efficient and cost-effective collection and treatment of materials and also contributes to positive environmental impacts of a circular economy. Through the cycle, with effective leadership and producer responsibility, technology development, and public participation, the cycle really enables increased resource productivity. It drives economic growth through job creation, and it encourages innovation with new partnership developments and opportunities. The importance of a circular economy really cannot be understated as it builds on social, natural, and economic capital simultaneously. The transition, tra the transition from a linear economy does not only minimize negative effects, it also promotes long-term resource productivity while reducing environmental impacts. Some analysts say that the manufacturing of goods in an era of consumerism and overconsumption has been one of the primary engines for climate change. The harmful emissions of greenhouse gases in conjunction with the depletion of natural resources really has led the planet into the hardships that it faces today. By reevaluating how we create products, what materials that we use, and the quantities in which we manufacture, and ultimately how we repair and dispose of them, we can improve our environmental health on all fronts on a global scale. There are bound to be the transitionary phases or circumstances where the use of environmentally responsible and recyclable materials just isn't feasible. But that doesn't mean nothing can be done to help promote the circular economy. One primary issue with many of the products sold today is that they are a combination of many different types of materials, causing issues or flat-out refusal when recycling. 
products need to be made from the beginning with modular components enabling easy repair and simple material separation at the end of life. These changes alone can ensure a high quality product with a long lifetime and a responsible plan for reintroducing these materials back into the supply chain. So the circular economy really drives uh, quality economic opportunity through the various points that are up on the screen. The first being a competitive economy. So as the globe becomes more productive with the resource use, the waste diversion rates increase and recovering resources also improves. Competition increases between businesses wanting a large mass of a certain product so they can promote redesign and reusing material. It's through resource sorting, redesign of products, and improving the resource life cycle that this can create up to 10 times more jobs than just waste disposal as the reuse and remanufacturing sectors continue to grow. It's estimated that for every 1,000 tons of waste diverted from landfills, seven jobs are created through the existing waste diversion program. Through the circular economy, there's opportunity for cost savings. Various industries can save an average of about 40% in material costs just from recovering and reusing the materials, an average final price being about 30% cheaper. Businesses will also minimize costs by maximizing diversion rates and by returning higher volumes of recovered material back into the economy. The circular economy can drive new niche markets by creating new opportunities for entrepreneurs in eco-design, upgrading, and recycling innovation. It can also promote a higher quality economy, a high quality, long lasting jobs, improving conditions for workers, where today we're seeing more and more short, short term, unstable contracts rising. New business models can be achieved by innovative businesses looking to seize opportunities. Companies with significant market share could play a big role in driving the new models, materials and products. Profitable models and initiatives will pave the way for future opportunity and expansion. The shift will also save taxpayer money as the amount of waste we produce decreases, the cost of collecting and managing residential waste funded by municipal taxpayers also decreases. So here at Bush Systems, we film a weekly video series called Green Thinking, and I recently filmed an episode called Brands Driving Positive Change, which looked at um, some companies that are currently adopting circular economy processes and working towards a greener future. If you've been checking out our videos, you would have seen us talking about a circular economy. And if you haven't seen this video, well, make sure you go check it out here. The circular economy is so much more than just a buzzword. It has the ability to fix our world's waste problem. We're stuck in this consumerism way of thinking where we want, 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 and we just buy, buy, buy. All this stuff gets used briefly and then tossed, usually in the garbage, and the never ending cycle just continues. It's so inspiring to see some businesses adapting their manufacturing processes to a closed loop system. Here are some examples of some companies doing just that. Big brand names like Levi's are some of the most notable making this transition and are no stranger to sustainability. Every year, 24 billion pounds of clothes, shoes, and textiles end up in US landfills. Levi's works really hard to ensure that old clothes can be transformed into new clothing, building insulation, and cushioning material. Another clothing manufacturer that we're gonna look at is Patagonia. They had a strong marketing campaign on Black Friday where their advertisement said, don't buy this jacket. They encourage their customers to buy used clothing instead of new or just to fix what they already have. Industries of all sorts are experimenting with these fresh ideas. Craft breweries are on the rise and these brewing companies are producing more wastewater than ever before. For every finished barrel of craft beer, there are three and a half barrels of wastewater that is created. So an increase in craft breweries means an increase in wastewater treatment processes. Some breweries are using anaerobic digesters to help combat this problem. This is where anaerobic bacteria are introduced into the wastewater. They consume the pollutants in the wastewater and then release a methane-rich gas. This biogas is sustainable, stable, and an on-site energy source for the rest of the brewery. Let's take note of these companies and help to support their efforts. When companies embrace and really find the value in the circular economy, 
They're keeping their customers happy, creating lifelong products, and also being champions for the environment. When we look at industry on a global scale, it's clear to see that there are some countries that are much further ahead of adopting circular economy practices than others. The UK is one of the leaders in the circular economy. Compared to the year 2000, in 2010, the UK's economy had expanded 20% and the population had increased 6%. The amount of material that was recycled had more than doubled. Jobs in waste, recycling and reuse have been rising strongly recently, even in times of considerable weakness in the overall economy. The Netherlands has already achieved an 80% recycling rate, a 96% diversion from landfills, and has banned new landfills from being created. Recycling cars in the Netherlands is a very strong, strong suit. Uh, currently, about 85% of a scrapped car is put to use. Additionally, their largest national airline uses cooking oil for fuel from, from flights from Amsterdam to Paris. The Netherlands uses an approach known as land sinks ladder, whereby they create as minimal amount of waste as possible, recover valuable raw materials from it, generate energy by incinerating the residual waste, and then dump what's left over in an environmentally friendly way. Only about 4% of the materials generated in the Netherlands ends up in the landfill. So then we can look to Scotland as another example. So they have a national uh, food waste reduction program, and their goal is to reduce uh, food waste by one third by the year 2025. The Scottish Institute for Remanufacturers supports remanufacture through collaboration, innovation, and knowledge, knowledge exchange. Also, the Scottish Circular Economy Business Network promotes collaboration between business, academia, and the public sector. And finally, the Household Recycling Charter within Scotland develops a more consistent recycling collection program by improving recycling rates and quality. We can also look at California uh, as a great example, where by 2020, they're hoping to achieve a 75% recycling rate. This is estimated to create at least 110,000 additional jobs. Waste collection and landfill usage creates less than one job per 1,000 tons managed. With the collection, processing, and manufacturing of products with recycled materials feedstock, this creates about 6 to 13 jobs for every 1,000 tons. The variation is dependent on the materials that are being used. So as you can see, achieving a circular economy is no easy feat. It doesn't happen overnight, and it takes a tremendous amount of planning from all levels of society. We need to alter people's viewpoints to see that waste is not just a discarded material, but it's a valuable resource. We need to begin to recognize that the value in materials as businesses and individuals and the real environmental costs associated with them. Do the products you use, wear, and consume really reflect the environmental costs associated with them? We need to acknowledge that the negative aspects and destructive nature of the linear economy on our everyday li lives and make changes at an individual, local, and global level. As with most large-scale operations or initiatives, participation and adaptation are critical components to success. The circular economy operates strongest with full support from individuals, organizations, municipalities, and governments all working together to achieve common goals. The proposed economy is built off of a sharing and collaboration platform, one in which waste does not exist and instead is offered to those who can use it as a resource. Lastly, strong leadership and support from governments to change policy framework and to set in motion the chain of events that must happen for a successful circular economy. There needs to be incentives for, for participants to find new inventive methods of using waste. There needs to be investments in innovation and development in new recycling, sorting and processing technology. There needs to be an infrastructure in place that promotes and prioritizes the acquisition of recycled materials over virgin ones. But conversely, there also needs to be penalties for companies who fail to adopt a progressive plan to phase in changes necessary to achieve a circular economy. We saw earlier in the video that it is important to understand that this is not just a few businesses working towards achieving a circular economy. It requires all industries and all businesses working together toward a common goal, regenerating materials and avoiding landfills. We are in a generation where younger people see the circular economy through a new lens. We are beginning to see the circular economy as an opportunity for redesign and to rebuild the system. Today, we have the ability to build a future that will work in the long term. 
So that wraps up our webinar today on uh, the circular economy. So thanks for uh, listening to our presentation. Our contact information is up here on the screen. So feel free to reach out if you have any questions or comments, and Sean and I are happy to help you. Um, and also take a look at our Bush Systems webinar page, and feel free to sign up for any of our future webinars as well. Thanks so much.